I want this, I want this, I want this, and that. There you go. Alright, we'll kick straight into this uh, very quick talk time. I'll show you that stuff in a minute and have a yak. A uh, couple of questions that come through to me. One of them is clay, and I get this a lot. I'm not catching any animals. I've been trying for a year. I've got pig dogs. I'm going out the same place everybody else is going out. My two pups, I can't get them going. What do I do? This is one of my patrons. He PM'd me, and I really feel for him because I know what it's like. I've been there, mate. I've done that. I've been through the hard yards, and you know, I'm not the right guy really to ask because I don't catch a lot either compared to some people. I mean, you know, I'm probably enough meat goes in the freezer most of the time to feed the family and friends, but quite honestly, there's been times that I've been catching nothing and my friend Kim's given me some meat. Uh, I've had thin periods too, but there are some basic things that you can do to increase your hunting. Now, if you're a deer stalker, there's so many products out there that try to help you. They're a huge market and a lot of them are bullshit. One of the things is like deer scent or there's the sort of thing people say, you know, wash all your clothes in a neutral smelling detergent so the deer can't smell it. And I'm on sort of two sort of minds about that. To my thinking, if the deer can smell your detergent that's in your clothes, then you're already on the wrong side of the wind. Smell and sight, those two things give you away and of course noise as well as a biggie. But, you know, they smell you, they're gone. Deer are the same, pigs are the same. Goats you can get away with, it's marginal with goats, they're a bit dumb. But definitely with deer, you got to keep away from the right, the wrong side of the wind. You know, if your wind's going to them, they're gone before you even see them. So that's one big thing. Another thing too, which is really important, is scouting. And you know, we don't talk about this enough, particularly if you guys are pig hunting. Scouting is important. Now, scouting means going into the scrub without your dogs, without your rifle. You can take your camera, but that's it. You take nothing to make a kill. Just take your knife for safety and all your safety stuff, but don't go in there expecting to hunt. So you're going to do reconnaissance work. You're going to find out where the fresh tracks are. And the most important thing that you need to find if you're a pig hunter is that mark. Now if you're a trophy type pig hunter that likes to get tusks, like big tusks and big boars, then you're looking for that big mark with the spread dew and the fresh one. And you're trying to work out where he's going at night and where he's going in the daytime. So you can plan the time of day you're going to hunt. Invariably, if he's a boar, he'll be up somewhere really high. That's where he'll be staying most of the time. And he'll be coming down to the lowlands to feed where the native meets the pine. Or in those places with lots of nutrients, lots of logs you can roll over, get some hoo-hoo grubs, worms, you know, forage. So he's going to be looking for food. If it's a summer time, then predominantly he's going to be hanging out on the south side if you're in New Zealand or Australia, if you're this side of the uh, equator. So cool areas. Um, are where they like to go, but it's not just always the case, because I've also caught pigs on the northern faces too. But that is a rule that we sort of go by. But the big thing is to do your scouting. Go in there and find out where they are. Hatch a plan. So if you go into the area and you just find there's just no fresh sign or it's not looking good, then you, you don't go back to it. Now you might say to yourself, well why the hell would I do that? Why wouldn't I just go with my dogs first? And the reason being is, if you're targeting a specific animal, if you're after that boar, then you've got to start off with a mark. If there's no mark around, there's no boar around. It's simple as that. You've got to start off with a mark. You know, earlier on this year, uh, we got two boars in a row on public land. Uh, Dan went in, he took uh, Bob and Liz and he got a nice boar. And the week after that we got a second boar. And those two pigs, I had gone in two weeks before and I'd found both of their marks. I said, there's going to be a pig in there, a good pig, so we'll go for that. And I'd gone in with just my pack, a day pack, and no rifle. So reconnaissance works really, really important. The other thing is the type of terrain that you're hunting. If you're after deer, obviously, you know, this time of the year is a really good time in November in New Zealand because the hinds are kicking out the yearlings. They're running around. They're easy prey. They're good meat. They're not too heavy to carry out. Well, they are for me, but most of you guys will handle them okay. And they're an easy target. They'll even stand sometimes and look at you while you shoot them. So November is a really good month to go out and get some venison. And I would be going out now till probably the end of November. And even later on, you'll find December, you're still going to get those nice, easy yellings. Great tucker. They're mean, eating the spring growth. They're getting a little bit of condition on and they're tender as. So that's a good one to go for. Now, if you're going for pigs, pigs like to be in the horriblest, heinous, the worst shit that you can imagine. The place you don't want to go, that's where pigs are. They're in blackberry, they're in gorse, they're in nettle, they're in hawthorn, they're in all that shit that dogs don't want to go. That's where you'll find often the sows with their babies because they're trying to stay safe. If you're targeting meat, go for it. 
I've got no problem with people killing sows. I mean, people go, oh, yes, you know, sow killer. Predominantly, what we eat at home is sow meat. You can have your stinky old boar. I want to eat a nice young maiden sow. That's the best food you'll ever have is a maiden sow with a shiny coat that hasn't had anything yet. Yeah, if it's a titty sow and she's feeding, we don't want to kill her. And that's why it's kind of good if you've got two dogs like I've got Poe. I can call Poe off. She doesn't do too much damage and pace. Yeah, you can tear them off, but uh, generally we're able to let pigs go again or not even target them. In fact, Poe will run along and see a small pig and she'll go, nah, I'm not interested and come out. And it's taken a while to get to that. So to answer your question, Bud, the guy that's asked me about, you know, how to catch more pigs, what I would say to you is, Lots of hunting, but do your reconnaissance work. And also, if you can, if your two dogs aren't going that well, try and team them up with an older bloke that's got a main dog that's going a bit better, because a lot comes down to dogs as well. But first of all, you've got to have the location, and there's always pigs in dock land somewhere. Just got to be prepared to walk a bit further than most. Rightio. Uh, the other question I got asked was, what do I take with me on... In, in the way of first aid for my dogs. Now that's a whole video in itself, first aid kit for dogs. That was one of my patrons asked me that. I think it's in the public section on Patreon, comment section. I will go into a whole video on that because it's an important one. Uh, one of the things I will say at this time of the year, get electrolytes into your dogs before you go. There's some really good products out there, but electrolytes before and after the hunt. Uh, this can help save your dog and you know, accidents happen with dogs overheating. So try and get out of the bush by 8, 30, 9 o'clock finish your hunting for the day in the morning if you're going out in the summertime. Right, a um, couple of other things. Someone asked me about what I carry in the way of first aid and survival stuff for myself. This is my survival pack. As you can see, it's been already opened. Inside it's got a first aid kit, it's got a knife, it's got uh, some wax matches, it's got the little torch in there, it's got the usual rubber for getting a fire going. A whole lot of stuff. What else it had in there is it had two protein bars, which the other day I was in the bush with my son uh, a while ago, we were up the Pierce Valley, and he got himself bushed, and we ended up cracking this open and taking the two bars out. There's also a survival blanket you see shining there. We took the two um, protein bars out because we were just stuffed after hours and hours of walking, and we just needed that little bit extra. I also carry my personal locator beacon in this. Actually, right now it's in my life jacket because I've been out fishing, but my personal locator beacon is the Rescue Link one. Bloody good to have. In fact, a real must if you're doing solos. Now, one other thing I want to show you guys is these. You can buy these on eBay. You can buy these on Trade Me. These are bloody handy. As you can see, one side's burnt. The other side's reflective. Now, I've had this for a couple of years now, and it's invaluable. If you're lighting a fire and there's wind, you put it around in the scrub, and you get your fire going. Like you know, It's really going to uh, keep the wind off, which just saves you so much hassle. You're trying to light a fire. You haven't got this around you a lot of places. It just ain't happening. You can use it with your gas cooker. You can use it with your just a standard fire by itself. Um, yeah, by itself it's really good. And also, when you're doing fish on a rock or something, if you put it around this way, not too close to fire, this actually reflects the, the heat into it. But most of the time I've got it up close and that's why it gets like that. They're cheap to buy. I paid $11 New Zealand for that and I bought it on Trade Me. Like I said, they're on eBay and they're also on Trade Me in New Zealand. So, a wee tip. Right, this came from Richard Ware. Richard is probably one of my very, very first patrons. And he's actually not on Patreon. He started paying me privately. A real good bastard. I had the pleasure of meeting him and having a meal with him. A real good pig hunter. There's a lot of possibing. Got a lot of respect for Richard. He's uh, one of those guys that works hard and catches a lot of pigs. Catches a lot of everything, actually. Now, he sent these for me to give to someone else. Uh, what do we got here? I'm not sure why he's given away whether they were too big. There's no note in there. So this one here is a size 2XL. It's brand new on the packet. The top, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, top. It's a fleece. And another one. This one's a multi-kai cooker. That's from hunting and fishing. And it's also extra large. Two tops. So if you are a 2XL, and you're a patron and you want one of these tops, message me and I'll send them to you. Happy to give those away to patrons. That's all. Right now in this area, the snapper are in the bay, they're just going off. I went out yesterday and got one. That was enough for me because I've got no one here and I came in when I got it. Cooked it up, I'll have a video of that. It was absolutely mean as out there, like mean as. I actually took a wave in the boat. Um, it was close and I nearly broached one time going down the wave. I shouldn't have gone out, it was a bit dangerous. 
but I'm used to going out in that sort of water. My boat's not redesigned for it, but it was a pretty bloody crazy uh, time to be going out. I did have my personal locator beacon, I had my radio, and I also had my cell phone in a plastic bag, so shit hit the fan. I could have called someone up, but it was a bit dodgy. Pace and I were out there catching a few fish, but we made it home. That'll be another clip for another day. Anyway, good luck with your own fishing, your own hunting, and I'll have another chat through the week because I didn't really want to do this talk time. I had something else planned, so I'll do that one a bit later on. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. See you later.